Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season and Happy New Year. It is now 2018, which is just crazy and super exciting. It's going to be a wonderful year and we have a bunch of plans in store for this new year. And we're going to be putting out a video in the near future explaining what those plans are. So make sure that you watch out for that. But now that we're back from our holiday break, we thought we'd get right back into creating video games. And so for this video, we're going to jump back into creating our tic-tac-toe game. Now in the last video, we were able to add a little bit more code to our tic-tac-toe button function to make it easier for our code to tell which space has been marked by which player. Now in this video, we're going to use that information to create a winner check function. This is going to be a function that will run after every time a player takes a turn and it'll check to see if one of the players has won the game. And so let's get started. All right, so here we have our tic-tac-toe project open inside of Unity, and I'm actually not gonna play through our game just yet because there were no visual changes made to our game in the last video. And so let's just jump right into our game controller script and create the winner check function. So I'm gonna open that up in Visual Studios. Once you have your script open in Visual Studios, the first thing that we need to do is make some changes to the existing code. Now, the first change that we need to make is in the game setup function, and it is this line here where we are calling our marked spaces array, and we're accessing it by index i, and we're setting it equal to negative one. Now, the reason why we need to change this is because setting each element of this array to negative one is actually going to cause problems in the winner check function. Now, we actually need to set each element of this array to something a little more drastic, something like negative 100. By setting it to something so drastic, it'll make it so that there won't be any logic errors in our winner check function. Now, the next line of code that we need to change is within our tic-tac-toe button function, which is located right here. And the line of code that we need to change is this line here, where we are accessing the mark spaces array by the index of which number, and we're setting it equal to whose turn. Now, all we have to do is add a plus one to the end of this line. And the reason why we need to do this is because whose turn is either going to be a zero or a one. And having each element of this array set to a zero or one will also cause similar logic errors as the other line of code that we changed. But by adding this plus one, it means that we're setting the elements of this array to either a one or a two, because if it's a zero, it'll become a one. And if it's a one, it'll become a two. Now that we've fixed these two lines of code, let's go ahead and create our winner check function. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to create that function. I'm going to type void, and then I'm going to type winner check, and then parentheses and curly braces. Now, before we add any code to this function, let's think a little bit about the rules of tic-tac-toe. And to do so, I'm actually going to switch back over to Unity real quick. So here we are back in Unity, and in tic-tac-toe, we have a 3x3 three three grid, which we've already created in a previous video. But by having a 3x3 three three grid, this means that we have a total of nine spaces or cells for the players to mark. And in order for a player to win a game of tic-tac-toe, they have to mark three spaces in a row. Now there is a total of eight possible ways or solutions that a player can mark three spaces in a row. There's the three horizontal lines, there's the three vertical lines, and there's the two diagonals. That's a total of eight. So now that we know how tic-tac-toe works and how a player can win tic-tac-toe, we can go back to the winner check function and create code that will obey those rules. And so within this winner check function, we actually need to create an algorithm that will run through all those eight possible solutions and check to see whether a player has three in a row. Now, the easiest way for us to check each one of these eight solutions is for us to create eight separate lines of code. And each one of these lines of code are going to take corresponding values from the mark spaces array for each solution and add them together and then store them in a variable. Then we're going to be able to use those variables to see if the value stored in that variable is a value that corresponds to the X player or the O player. 
Now that might be a little hard to wrap your head around, but I'm going to go ahead and code out these eight lines of code, and then it should make a little more sense. Now each one of these eight lines of code are going to be doing relatively the same thing, only using different values. And so I'm going to type out the first line of code and then copy it seven times and then change the values. And so the first thing that we need to do is create a temp or local variable within the winner check function. And so this is going to be of type int and I'm going to call it s1 for solution one. And then I'm going to set it equal to the marked spaces array and I'm going to access the first element which is element zero. And then I'm going to add it to marked spaces array and access the second element which is element one. And then I'm going to add that to marked spaces array and access the third element which is element two. Then I'm going to leave a semicolon. So if you can tell what's going on here, we're actually taking each element corresponding to the top row of our three by three grid, and we're adding all those values together and then storing it within the S1 variable. And so we ne now need to do that for the other two horizontal lines, then the three vertical lines, and then the two diagonals. And so I'm going to copy this line of code and then paste it seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's throwing errors because we've already declared S1. <clears throat> now it's throwing errors because we've already declared S1. And so we need to change each one of these variables to be S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, and S8. So now that we've changed the variable names, we need to change the values that are being added together and stored in each variable. Now the first line of code is fine because that's the first row, but we now need to change the second line of code and so we're going to access all the elements corresponding to the second row or the middle row. And so this is going to be element three and then element four, element five, the next line of code is going to be for the bottom row, and that's going to be element six, and then element seven, and element eight. The next three lines are going to be for the three vertical solutions, and the last two lines are going to be for the two diagonals. Now I'm gonna real quick just change the indexes by which we are accessing the mark spaces array, and then once I'm done, you can copy down the values. <music> All right, so there we go. We now have all eight possible solutions being added together and stored in their own individual variables. Now, the next thing that we want to do is take all eight of these variables and put them into their own array so that we can then for loop through them and check them against set values. So on this next line of code, I'm going to type var to create the array and I'm going to give this variable a name, which is going to be solutions. We then want to set it equal to a new int array and the values that we're going to save in this array are going to be the S1 through S8. So S1 comma S2 comma S3 and so on. So this line of code is taking the eight previous variables and saving them into an array called solutions. So now we can create a for loop to for loop through each element of solutions. So I'm going to type for and then int i equals zero semicolon i is less than solutions dot length semicolon and then i plus plus. Then we need to add some curly braces. Within this for loop, we're going to then create an if statement, which is going to check each element of the solutions array and compare it against a value corresponding to either the X player or the O player. And so I'm going to type if and then solutions, square brackets, and inside the square brackets, I'm going to use the index I from our for loop. And I'm going to see if it equals and then here is where we need to talk about what the values are going to be. Now to figure out this value, we need to create some sort of formula that will always be correct for whose turn it is. 
And so to do that, we need to look at the math of each one of these formulas. Now, what is being saved into the marked spaces array? It's either a 1 or a 2. Now, it used to be a 0 and a 1, but then we added this plus 1 at the beginning of this video. So 0 and 1 becomes 1 and 2. Now, for example, let's say player X has all three spaces along the top row marked. That means that marked spaces array at element 0 is going to equal 1, and at element 1 it's going to equal 1, and at element 2 it's going to equal 1, which means that when we add all those values together, S1 is going to equal 3. Now, if it was player O, that means that marked spaces at element 0 would be a 2, marked spaces at element 1 would be a 2, and marked spaces at element 2 would be a 2, which means that when we add all those values together, S1 will equal a 6. And so for an X player to win, he has to have a 3. That's his number. Corresponding number is a 3. For player O, his corresponding number is a 6. So what formula can we add to this if statement here so that when it's the X player's turn, it will equal a 3, and when it's the O player's turn, it will equal a 6? Now to do this, all we have to do is use the whose turn variable and do a little manipulation to it. And so we're actually going to do three times parentheses whose turn plus one. So this is the formula that we need for the other half of this if statement. Now let's run through the logic real quick. So if it's the X player's turn, that means whose turn is going to equal zero. So zero plus one times three equals three. And so we're comparing to see if solutions accessed by index i is equal to 3. And if it is, then we know that the x player has that solution. And so he will be the winner. If it is the o player's turn, then whose turn will equal 1. So 1 plus 1 times 3 equals 6. And so we're comparing solutions accessed by index i equal to 6. So that's pretty cool, but now we need to do something inside this if statement so that we know that it's working. And so I'm going to add some curly braces, and I'm just going to add a debug statement for now. So this debug statement is going to be debug.log, and then in parentheses we're going to type player in quotes, so player, and then space, and then we're going to say plus whose turn plus quotes space one exclamation point. So this debug statement will print out a log statement to the console if one of the players wins the game. So if it's the X player, it'll say player zero one. If it's the O player, it'll say player one one. So let's add a semicolon and then on the next line of code, let's return out of this function. In the next video, we'll create a display winner function and then we'll call that function within this if statement so that we're doing more than just a debug statement. The last thing that we need to do is call the winner check function. Now I'm going to call this within the tic-tac-toe button function and I'm going to call it after this line here where we increment the turn count. Now there is one condition that we can also add in which is if turn count is greater than four. And the reason why we add in this if statement is because we know that before turn four, there is not even going to be a player with three marked spaces. He's either going to have one space marked or two spaces marked, but not three spaces. But after turn four, so turn five, is when the X player places his third mark. And so once the X player places his third mark, we then want to check to see if there's a winner. So I'm going to call the winner check function here. So that's everything that we need for the winner check function. Let's go ahead and save our code and go back to Unity. There's no new variables that we need to set, so let's go ahead and hit the play button. So here we have our game playing, and it is the X player's turn. So I'm going to mark a space, and then I'm going to mark another space, and another space, and another space. Let's mark so that it's the first vertical line for the X player. And there we go. So now it is the O player's turn because we don't have a finishing 
code, a, a code to finish the game yet. But if we go down here to the bottom left corner, I don't know if you can see that, it says player 01, and I'm actually going to stop the game, go to our console, and here you can see that message. So player 0 or player X, 1. And so let's play through it one more time and have the O player win. So here's the X and the O and then the X, O, X. Oh, crap. I uh, had the X player win. So let's do it one more time. Okay, so X, O, X, O, X, O. There we go. So now when we look at the console, it says player one, one. Pretty cool. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. We were able to create the winner check function. In the next video, we will create a like display winner function so that when a player wins the game, we can show that, oh, X player, you know, rather than showing player zero one or player one one, we'll actually say player X one and we'll display it across the screen. And so that will be really cool. Now make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can get updated when we release new videos. We'll see you next time.